Okay, take it away, Sheila. All right. Okay, I am not muted, so I will. I'm Kathy. Um, uh, actually, Kathy, do you want to uh, to uh, start us off? Welcome, everyone. And uh, to our uh, 2019 annual meeting. And I'm, uh, I'll introduce Kathy Warner. She is the president of our board and will be chairing this evening's meeting. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry, I guess I, am I unmuted now? I think so. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah. I wasn't as I was starting to. We're 109, 109 of us on the line. Oh, yeah. that is so amazing. Oh, my goodness. And I have to say, I had the opportunity to watch all your, your videos earlier today. And actually, I watched a few of them on the weekend and then watched them, some of them again today, earlier today. And so impressed. And at some points, I was like, I think I'm going to cry. Like, it's so heartwarming. Thank you so much for all the incredible work you do and all the, the time and um, just for sharing that with all of us tonight. Thank you. Okay, so just to move on to our vert or the business part of the meeting, um, I believe Hannah, is there an agenda? Yes, there we go. Here we are here. Okay, yes. Thank you. So and thank you all for being patient as we move along the the business agenda part of this meeting because there are you know requirements and bylaws that say as a nonprofit organization we are mandated to and obliged to do this so we'll just try to move along this part as quickly as possible um i do need to um ask that those who attended our agm last year um so that would have been our agm for 2018 um if i could have a review and approval of uh oh no i guess we need to do the approval of the agenda for this meeting first so is the agenda in front there to be able to pull up hannah uh yeah Lori's controlling the agenda and i'm oh sorry Pat, and there's a few people who are saying they're not getting audio so um, just okay. give one second i'm going to make sure everyone's muted except for you too I, my apologies, the full agenda was sent out, but I don't have it in the screen. Okay. I'm just going to take a moment then to find that so I can have it in front of me since I'm chairing this meeting. And um, that would have been from Val. Yeah. I cut. Yeah, okay, now I have it. Okay. okay. So as I as I mentioned, our first item on agenda, and that's um, in front of us, or stated in front of us, is the review and approval of agenda. So that was sent out to all our board members. So board members, if you could please, or one of you please motion to accept and approve the agenda for the 2019 um, Compass Early Learning and Care um, Annual General Meeting, please. I'll make that motion. Is there someone that would second? I'll second, it's Sarah. And all those in favor? probably need you to vocally say yes so I can hear you because I can't see all of your Kathy sorry to interrupt you yes. um, we have the ability to do the polling mm -hmm. um, but I believe we can't do screen sharing and polling at the same time from what I can tell here so we just need to go back and forth so Lori okay. and I will coordinate to make that happen okay so just give us one second here while we pull up the poll yep okay
So board members, my understanding is, oh, and, and anyone who also is attending the annual general meeting, perhaps you're a parent, um, staff employees of Compass are not eligible to vote, but board members, or if you're a parent um, of a child at early learn or Compass Early Learning and Care, you can um, vote on any of the motions made tonight. So you will see that there will be a poll put up. And so if that applies to you, please feel free to uh, vote. Sorry, the poll has disappeared for us. We yeah. practiced it, it all went very smoothly and now it's just disappeared on us. So I'm not quite sure. Lori, I'm not sure if you can see a poll from your end. We're co-hosts, so I'm not sure. I, can't, I cannot see a poll. Um, I did stop my share so you could do the poll. So um, uh, I wonder if we can just have those members raise their hand. Well, you, we might have to do it vocally because I'm not sure if, at least myself as chair, I cannot see right. everyone or all the members in front of me visually. There is a I'm sure if we did it by voice. Um, we get enough votes to do it. Yeah. First of all, could I do a little bit of a roll call of our board so I know who is present? So um, I know Sarah and Doug. Who else is here? Here. Meryl? Megan? Is I'm there? here. Yeah, it's Megan. Megan. Amanda. 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 Okay. John? Yeah, I don't um, see John. Okay. Is there anyone else here who is not a board member but is a, a parent? A member? Are we voting tonight? A member? Okay. So it looks like it will be our board members who will be putting forward the motions and voting this evening. Well, that certainly makes things easier then. So people can just put into the chat if they're in favor. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Anna, I'm gonna go back to screen share. Yeah, go ahead. The polling seems to have stopped working for some reason, so. Okay, so we'll do um, the the group chat, which is, um, I'm sure all of you will be able to find it. It's a little um, message icon. And okay, so approval of our agenda. All those in favor? Well, we've done the motion. I moved it, Sarah seconded. All those in favor? So we did have some people in the uh, chat that said yes. Do you have four in favor? Uh, one, two, three, yes. four. Yes, and I, as chair, I cannot vote, so. Okay. Beauty. One, two, three, four. That's it. Good. Motion okay. carried. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay, the next on our agenda is to establish quorum, and it looks like we do have Quorum. We have enough board members present at this meeting, so quorum has been established. Uh, conflict of interest, declaration of conflict of interest. Anyone who has conflict this evening? No? Okay. We can move on to review and approval of the April 29th, 2019 um, which was the 2018 AGM meeting. So last year, um, the minutes were sent out along with the uh, agenda for tonight's meeting. So board members, if I could have someone to motion that we approve the minutes from 2020 or 2019. I'll make the motion. It's Sarah. Okay, thank you. Someone to second? I can second that. 
Cheryl to second. All those in favor? Put in the chat. Four in favor. Okay. Approved and carried. Thank you. Okay, moving right along to our financial report. Uh, so Jason is here, and thank you, Jason. I sorry, Jason. I should have um, introduced you earlier, but um, Jason is here on behalf of BDO, and he is our auditor. And at our last board meeting, we actually approved our uh, 2019 financial statements. But what we need to do tonight is to present them and ask that <clears throat> the approved um, statements be accepted. Jason? Okay, great. I think I'm unmuted. Yes, you are. Yep. Perfect. So, yes, thank you. Uh, pleasure to always uh, <coughs> on Compass as AGM, and uh, even in these strange times, it's just, the videos were great. Um, so, I'm here to just go over uh, the financial statements and our auditor's report. Management is responsible for the financial statements themselves. As independent auditors, it's our responsibility to form an opinion on whether those statements are presented fairly in compliance with accounting standards for not-for-profit organizations in Canada. My staff were on site through February and into early March uh, to complete our audit. And I'm happy to report that we had no issues with our audit testing. We had full cooperation from management. And, and all, as I said, all of our testing and analysis were satisfactory. And so it is our opinion that these financial statements are presented fairly in accordance with accounting standards for not-for-profit organizations. At this time, I don't propose to go through the financial statements in detail. That's a fairly dry exercise at the best of times, and, and a Zoom meeting probably is not the best forum for it. But I will end with a, with a few financial highlights. So in 2019, Compass continued to grow and expand the number of centers. And as a result, revenue increased by roughly $2.5 million. And expenses rose by almost the same amount. So for the year ended December 31st, 2019, there was a surplus of $535,000. And this was used to continue to build the contingency reserve. At the end of December of 2019, the contingency reserve had a balance of roughly $1.5 million in it. And if you think of the, the level of expenses, it, it equates to about one month worth of operating expenses. Um, in addition, there were reserves of um, $600,000 in two um, new program and new center reserves. Near the end of 2019, the new Janet Castle Center was started, and hopefully that will be completed in 2020, or, or maybe it'll drag into 2021 a little bit. And then, of course, subsequent to the year end, uh, our current situation with the COVID-19 pan pandemic um, hit. And, and as a result, there's a little bit of uncertainty as to what the impact will be for Compass in 2020. But with the reserves I mentioned earlier and the, the source of funding through the, through the government, um, I think it's fair to say that Compass is well positioned to, from a financial perspective to weather the storm and come through um, and, and continue to, to um, provide the, the valuable service that, that they're used to giving once, once things return to some state of normal. Um, and unless there's any specific questions, I'm going to end my report with that. Okay, thank you, Jason. Uh, so could I please have uh, a board member to motion, make the motion to accept the audited 2019 financial statements as presented? It's Amanda, I will motion. All right. Thank you, Amanda. Second. 
If Sarah, I will second. Thank you, Sarah. All those in favor? Yes, we have four. Great. Thank you. Okay, motion is carried. Okay, now we need to move on to the appointment of our 2020 auditor and Doug, your name is actually beside that. Uh, with pleasure, I'd like to make a motion that we appoint BDO Dunwoody as our auditors for 2020. And someone to second that on the board? Amanda. All those in favor? You can find your chat box. Thank you. That motion is carried to accept BDO Dunwoody as our auditor for 2020. Thanks, Doug. Okay, our annual report. And, um, this is the time when Sheila and I um, together are going to Go over our report. Sheila, if you can just give me a give me a minute. I need to go out of the agenda and go back into my report. Yep. Okay. Not a minute or not a problem. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank all uh, everyone who contributed to the um, to the video and um, tonight. It was just a beautiful. Uh, yeah, there was lots of crying and tears <laughs> over such a beautiful job and um, uh, I think it's a testament to the kind of work that we do and certainly a testament to distributed leadership, how uh, within our organization and our, what we call our compass family, um, mm -hmm. people have taken up this leadership um, role with, with vigor and, uh, and it's, it's so moving to see just all of the different areas that, um, that our strength comes from. Mm -hmm. Sheila, before you begin, can I ask a question about the, the photo that's on the slide in front of us? Is that an actual photo of one of our programs? I saw it in the video. It is. It's from our Peterborough School Age program, a field trip they took. Oh, it is a stunning photo. Really, really stunning photo. There's a, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but there's a beautiful piece of documentation that accompanies this photo. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Okay, well, you can go ahead, Kathy. I think you um, can start. Oh, that's sure. right. I am starting. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to, I just so you know, I'm going to try and move the slides as best as I Okay. Right. Well, in 2019, remember that's the report that the year that we're reporting on, offered us a year of uh, transition, growth, and development. We welcomed new board members, new programs, and new ways of doing business. We experienced incredible professional learning opportunities and began to think about distributed leadership in new and deeper ways. Our board of directors continues to offer guidance and policy leadership to our organization. And we participated in the annual all staff or all staff and board get together at Elmhurst. This year, Maya Jacobich offered us an experience in Indigenous history in Canada, and it was very powerful and gave us a greater understanding of the Indigenous perspective and the impact of colonialism. As president, I have had the opportunity to also accompany Compass to the Work Human Conference in Nashville. I believe it is so important for board members to have a full understanding of the work and the thought and the work and the thought leaders such as Cy Wakeman and Brene Brown were influencing their work. Sheila? Hey, 
Thank you. Um, at Compass ELC, humans are at the heart of everything that we do. And um, they are a class that uh, children, families, educators, uh, administration staff, um, our board of directors, providers, um, our cleaners, our every person within our organization, but also our community partners, all play a part in the success of our organization. This year, we had a big um, focus on human resources and the growth of our human resources department doubled from two to four. Um, this growth, of course, um, was reflective of us reaching that 400 person mark. And, um, and because our per people are integral to the care that we offer to children, um, we want to honor them and support them as best we can to be uh, their best selves. So we spent much of the year reinforcing our supports to our staff, welcoming new people to Compass, and you'll see more about that in Jenny's slides, and learning more about how to live into distributed leadership. Um, many thanks to Jen Jenny and Amy for their leadership in supporting um, our teams and uh, uh, advocating for um, our people, um, but also to, and also to Ryan and Val, who came, are the new, two newbies on the HR team and came in with the same zest and, and wonderful um, uh, values that, um, that have made us so successful at Compass. So I just, a special thank you to this HR team. Um, we welcomed new programs again this year. Uh, every year it seems that we get to welcome uh, another new program or many new programs. And this year, um, in 2019, in January, we welcomed Coburg um, into our family. Um, and right from the very beginning, it was clear that they had come home, that this was the place where um, where they needed to be and uh, together we've learned so much from them and um, and I hope that we've also learned from uh, that they've learned from us as well and um, we're just excited to have them part of our team. So um, our materials atelier uh, you saw in the video just before our meeting um, uh, opened in March and Angela uh, quickly saw her vision come alive um, and it was also thanks to her awesome mom, as she said in the video, uh, Betty Chapel, um, who was just a warm uh, breath of fresh air when we, when we go in there. So are you, Angela, but your mom is just a delight. Um, uh, both Durham Home Child Care um, and School Age and City of Cortha Lakes Home Child Care and School Age opened offices in their communities. Um, these spaces offered a place, um, offer a place for providers and, and staff to come together for celebrations, professional learning, and meetings. Uh, in Durham, the, our home child care program um, started, and um, we're really grateful to uh, Terry Lynn and Louise for the uh, work that they've done in um, in growing that as, as well as in Peterborough and City of Cortha Lakes where the number of providers is growing strong and, um, and we're really proud of the, the work that our providers are, are doing um, in their homes. Um, so um, we welcome each and every one of these teams and locations to Compass. Um, it's like you've always been here. Um, I think because we are so value-based and we talk about our values, people um, automatically uh, connect with that and say, yes, this is where I want to spend my life, my uh, career, and, um, and this is the way that I want to live. So, um, so welcome to all of uh, our new Compass family, and thank you so much for um, everyone that has been a part of Compass for a long time, a short time. Um, together, uh, we're going to enjoy new opportunities to grow and learn together, and, um, and it's just a great thing. Um, growth, growth was also evident in our consulting program. Lori, you're amazing. You never stop. <laughs> 
Um, you travel to Macau, China, Dubai, California, British Columbia, New Brunswick, and more to share the experience at uh, experiences from Compass and what we have learned about early childhood education and care. Thank you for holding us high and supporting our professional learning within Compass as well, Lori. A special shout out to our finance team. Oh my goodness. Um, Ashley was, uh, had a beautiful baby boy last year and was on maternity leave and Tammy was new to our organization. She worked so tremendously hard all year long with long hours to ensure the best information was available for the board and our organization. Krista and Ruth were also new to the uh, finance team and they also worked really hard and, um, and it's just been such a successful year as far as our finances go. And, um, and the auditors like said, what a um, great preparation was done for the audit. So congratulations to that team for work well done. Another person I'd like to acknowledge is um, Hannah, our communications coordinator. She's been instrumental in offering us many ways, uh, new ways to connect. She's introduced um, communicating within our organization, um, which we've used throughout this pandemic time. Um, so thank you so much, Hannah. Um, this year we, we had a, a new team develop. Um, it's our diversity team. We come together thinking about social justice and, um, and working together for a better compass and a better world. Um, thank you to that team um, and look forward to, um, to working further on that. And to all of our humans at Compass, thank you for your kindness, your generosity, your caring, your creativity, and your connection to our mission and our vision. We can only do this work because you work hard. There are so many special moments this year. Family gatherings and engagement with children and families playing side by side, learning all over again the joy of learning and discovery. The Dare to Lead book by Brene Brown, studies with program leads and many more book studies. The Materials Atelier opening, um, the distributed leadership discussions that we've had with so many teams and that we will continue to have as we learn more about what does distributed leadership mean and how do we, how do we bring this to our everyday practice. We have a new website uh, with board staff and provider pages for better communication um, and professional learning opportunities that we continue. And it's so exciting and, and um, to see so many faces um, on our uh, professional learning opportunities that we've been able to um, put out during this pandemic. And so again, thank you for all those of you who've made those magical moments happen. And um, here's to many, many more. I just, before I do stop, I do, um, I do want to, um, this afternoon I got a, an, uh, an email from, uh, from Carolyn Burns uh, from the Ontario Coalition for Better Child Care. And um, her and Martha Friendly are doing a national survey um, of how child care programs are, um, how we're doing in the, um, during the pandemic. And they don't want to hear from people like me, who <laughs> uh, they want to hear from from people who are actually living this. So, um, so they do have. We will be sending out um, the survey, but they, it's a quick turnaround time because they'd like us to be the guinea pigs for that, um, for the survey. And so, um, anyone who can, if you can, uh, fill out the survey and send it back to um, Carolyn Ferns at. Uh, the Coalition for Better Child Care, um, that would be great before, uh, before tomorrow afternoon, I think. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Back Thank, to Thank you, Sheila and Kathy. Oh, I I've got, we're not quite done, Lori, sorry. Yeah. I still have another piece. Got okay. It. Yeah. I, I just want to um, acknowledge our board of directors and say a special thank you to them. Um, oh, I'm just gonna say, Quickly before I forget, I was just, Sheila, I'm just in awe of the, I'm in awe every day of, of Compass and the amazing work that everyone does, but 
the, the, the things and the experiences that have happened just in what you've captured in 2019, I just can't wait to see what um, more amazing, phenomenal work will happen in 2020. So thank you for highlighting all those great things and the great work that everyone has done. Yeah. So back to our board. Thank you board members for all the work that you've done and your, um, your time and your many evenings um, that you've committed to the many meetings that we've had. Uh, in 2019, it was a year of transition for us on the board. Uh, we had a resignation of four directors, uh, Rachel Terrian, Carla Killick, James Brandon, and Stephanie Mazuka. Um, but we did see the addition of um, two new additional directors, uh, Amanda McEpperin Gaudet and Cheryl Herder. And thank you, Amanda and Cheryl, for coming and joining us in 2019. And then just in January 2020, uh, Megan Curran, who is our newest um, director on the board, um, joined us on the board. So we also, um, we, we also had uh, Doug Lytle and uh, John Gillian, Sarah Stokes, and myself who've remained on the board. And so um, that has offered us some, um, uh, some continuity and some experience as well. So I believe we have a, we have a great team. And again, thank you each of you for uh, being there and, and leading um, this organization. Uh, this year we also um, uh, used and tried out technology to be able to gather, which I believe was fairly successful. Uh, both Sarah and Amanda live outside of the Peterborough area, so it meant less, less traveling for them, particularly in, um, in climate weather when it wasn't so great to travel. And uh, also we have just more recently been meeting a little more often. Um, so it's been great that we haven't all had to um, meet um, in person at a, a meeting spot that we were able to do that virtually. And it's come in handy for um, as we've gone through this pandemic and it's really the only way that we're able to meet and obviously the, the way we're able to conduct our annual general meeting. Um, so also on behalf of the board, I would like to recognize Sheila for her amazing and inspiring leadership. And as noted throughout the report, um, and I mentioned this earlier, Compass Early Learning and Care grows, continues to grow, grow and thrive in so many ways. Sheila's belief that everyone is a leader and by providing them not only with the required tools and resources, but by lifting them up and believing that each and every one of you are capable and competent in the work that you do. I also want to acknowledge Sheila for her support to the early years community, both locally and provincially. On the weekend, I had the opportunity to watch a recording of a webinar uh, for childcare operators uh, with the fallout from the pandemic. And Sheila was one of the three guest panelists um, offering support to, I think there was like 350 bus operators from across the province. Um, and she was able to share stories of how Compass uh, is finding um, some remarkable and innovative ways to connect and support um, our staff and our families. So thank you, Sheila, Welcome. for leading the way. I also want to, um, I, I made note of one of the quotes, uh, I believe it was the Milbrook program that had a quote from Helen Keller that stated, alone we can, alone we do so little, but together we can do so much. And I really believe that of the Compass family. And that's a, family is one of the words that I heard over and over again throughout your presentation from your videos this evening. And I really truly and feel like Compass is um, becoming a supportive family. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's the end of our report. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Um, we just wanted to be able to offer any an opportunity for anyone if they had any questions or reflections that they wanted to offer. I know there's a lot of us on the line, 
So if you want to unmute yourself, if you have a question or if there's just something you want to offer, uh, we just have a couple of minutes. I hope everyone can see the chat. There's a great conversation going mm -hmm. on there as well. <laughs> Chat. Oh, <laughs> you might be going into politics, Sheila. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. Thank you for your comments. I think, um, Ashley, you're up. Oh, you know what? Sorry, Lori. I do. We do have to um, have a motion to approve the report as that Sheila oh. and I just did as presented. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think we're going to do that, Kathy, at the end of- Oh, at the end of that? The, yeah, yeah, all of the little reports. All the reports. Oh, I'm you. sorry. Do okay. yeah, that's okay. It's a little different this year, so we're- <laughs> Bear with us. Yeah. Okay. Ashley, you're up, my friend. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. For anybody that I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, um, my name is Ashley Collins, and I'm the finance link for the organization. Um, and I mean, as we've talked about, teams are everything. Um, and I have the pleasure of giving a report tonight that's going to be on behalf of myself, as well as our treasurer, Doug Lytle, and our amazing finance team that Sheila spoke about uh, earlier as well. So I'd like to open with this quote that you see on your screen. A good financial plan is a roadmap that shows us exactly how the choices we make today will affect our future. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now. I'm just going to let that sit and linger uh, for a little bit just to set the stage. And I'll come back to it uh, a little later on in the presentation. Um, so to open, um, I am pleased to share that Compass had another strong year financially in 2019. You'll note that we had a surplus of about 535,000 as Jason spoke about. And I always like to highlight the math in relation to our total revenues. Um, so you'll see by that chart there that that actually only translates into just over 2% of our total revenues. Um, and it's, it's become so important to have these small surpluses each year to support our contingency reserve. So if we flip to the next slide, on the revenue side of things, you'll note that parent fees as well as our fee subsidy continues to make up about two thirds of our revenue stream. So we've continued continue to see expansion in home childcare. As Sheila mentioned in her report, we're now offering support to providers in Durham in addition to Peterborough and City of Porth Lakes. Our center-based daycares continue to see strong enrollment and our school age programs have seen tremendous growth in the last few years. We were also very excited to extend a warm welcome to Coburg. As she mentioned, they joined the Compass CLC family in January 2019, and we are also very grateful to the County of Northumberland for their support in the transition as well. Government grants make up the second largest portion of our revenue streams, so we also want to say that we are very thankful to all of our municipal and other community partners for their continued financial support as well. On the expense side of things, um, you'll see that, um, um, or sorry, on behalf of the finance team, we are really proud to recognize some of the additional efficiencies this past year. So with parents as partners, we were able to continue our transition to online payments, which are now done predominantly through our Sandbox Parent Portal. And in collaboration with staff, we also moved to reimbursing employee expenses through our payroll system. Both of these improvements have furthered our paperless initiative, promoting the environment and sustainability. <clears throat> We do have one expense in particular that continues to rise and perhaps counterintuitive to traditional business thinking, we are actually very proud of it. This expense continues to rise in correlation with our revenue and enrollments, but also because we believe our staff deserve fair and equitable compensation for the important work that they do. You probably guessed by now that the expense I'm talking about is our wages and benefits. As you can see from the chart on your screen, that makes up about 85% of our overall expenses. I've always said that financials can tell you a lot about our organization's values, and we are certainly no exception to that rule. As Sheila mentioned in her report, humans are at the heart of everything we do. In 2015, we declared that we were striving to be a living wage employer and have taken steps toward that goal each year. At the end of 2019, we made the final leap and passed a budget that included pay increases to realize that goal, and as of 2020, can officially and very proudly proclaim that we are a living wage employer. 
As I mentioned previously, all in all, we ended the year with a surplus which was transferred into our contingency reserve. This reserve has become even more important with COVID-19 being declared a pandemic earlier this year, which resulted in us having to close many of our daycares with the exception of the emergency childcare and some of our home childcare providers who remained open. I mentioned wanting to go back to that quote um, that I initially opened with. Um, so Lori, if you don't mind popping that back up on the screen, thank you. Um, I just want to highlight, uh, especially the part that speaks to how choices we make each day impact our future. It has become so important, more so now than ever, that our team at Compass, along with the board, work collaboratively to plan those small surpluses each year in order to build that contingency fund, as it's what supported us through these financially challenging times. It was that plan we were working towards in years prior that has allowed us to continue to support our staff while managing the challenges of cash flow during this time. I also want to say that we are very grateful for external support, such as the funding we receive from municipalities and that 75% federal wage subsidy, as this in com combination with our internal reserves, as Jason mentioned to, um, earlier in his report from video, I truly believe that that will allow us to weather this storm and when it is safe to do so, open back up our doors to be able to support families with their transition to working again outside of the homes. And lastly, um, I'd like to close with a message of gratitude and say a big thank you to our treasurer, Doug Lytle, along with the rest of our wonderful board members, all of our municipal and community partners, our amazing finance and admin teams, all of our wonderful staff and home child care providers, and last but certainly not least, our families, as after all, they are the entire reason we are all here. Thank you for entrusting us with the care of your children and allowing us to be um, allowing us the joy of being part of their early learning experiences. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. Does anybody have any questions or reflections for Ashley? Okay. Thank you, Ashley. I will open with you. Okay. Is so, Lori, that's the end of her reports, or Sheila? That's it. There's three more reports. Three more. Oh. Yeah. So we still have Jill, Jenny, and myself to do ours. Oh, okay. Great. I'm looking forward to them. Okay. Jill. Sheila, you're muted. Is Jill muted? Can we unmute Jill? Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to interject here because um, in my uh, report, I didn't mention two very special people um, who are in our on our links team. Um, Jill, who is going to be telling you about her very busy year and without Jill, we would not be able to open up the new programs that we opened. She is a, uh, as all of you know, she's the kindest, most giving person. She will, um, uh, she will give you anything. All you need to do is ask and Jill will be there for you. She is so competent. Um, our uh, Ministry of Education representatives are so um, happy to work with Jill because she knows her stuff. She knows licensing and she knows what to do. Um, and so we're really proud to have her as part of our team. Thanks, Jill. Now you can talk. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, this is going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, anyway, for those that don't know me, my name is Jill Wickens, and I am the Operation Link with Compass Early Learning and Care. And I too am reporting on 2019. My report's pretty short um, because Sheila and Ashley pretty much covered everything that I. I've done all year. Wow. So, um, at, just at the beginning of 2019, we welcomed Coburg. Um, this team, it was so fun getting to know them. They're amazing human beings. They jumped in with their whole hearts. They embraced Compass values, beliefs, and vision. And we really are looking forward to what the next year's adventures will bring to us. In Durham, we, all, we opened up the um, Durham office for uh, home child care and they are now living in, in that space with the school age team it's absolutely beautiful it's welcoming engaging and every time I walk in there I want to become a home child care provider 
uh, Terry Lynn and Louise shared uh, the news across Durham Region, attending many local events. Uh, and they also worked in collaboration very closely with Schoolhouse Play Care and the YMCA. As Louise and Terry Lynn uh, were also new to their roles, they used this opportunity to gain knowledge, share thoughts and experiences, policies, procedures, um, what's next and where are we gonna go from here sort of thing. So it was a, it was a fun time just to be a part of those discussions and, and part of that growth. We look forward to supporting, um, we also look forward to supporting the children and families of Durham Region as we grow our ch home child care uh, program. We are currently at four with several more in the wings. Timbernook had a fun second uh, summer. Uh, the weeks were they filled the children with joy and laughter, and there was many fun experiences that were shared um, through our social media pages. Uh, and I know that uh, the Timbernook team has lots of new and exciting things ready for us this coming 2020. Uh, Lori, I'm going to go to the next slide. Lori? Yeah. <laughs> Um, in the spring of 2020, we also began a new relationship with uh, Halliburton, the County of Halliburton. Together, uh, we will be, we move forward the expansion for Minden. The variance applications were completed and building permits are now ready. We, it was a long few months uh, trying to get all of those things in place, but uh, they've finally landed where they need to be. Uh, we are hoping to break ground in the spring of 2020. Actually, today we just learned that they lifted the hold on construction builds for childcare. So we're starting up those conversations again. We want to send out a huge thank you to the County of Halberton's um, member of council, Mike Sutter and Charles Whiteley, for ensuring the children and families of the County of Halberton will have ac access to licensed childcare in the years to come. I've included a couple of conceptual drawings of the front and the back of the Minden Child Care Program, as well as the uh, floor plan. You will see that the space will be licensed for 10 infants, 15 toddlers, and 24 preschoolers. Thanks to Ron Odd and his team for their guidance and support through the tendering process. We have selected um, a contractor and we will be uh, hopefully having a construction meeting in the very near future. Uh, I'm going to use that saying that together we're better because that sure is what's happening up in Minden. Uh, we are currently actually talking with Trillium Lakelands too around uh, that will be our relocation spot. We're hoping that the child care program will move into two rooms within the school, the old section of the school, and we will be uh, there until the construction is complete. Uh, and Jane Austen, the principal at Archie Stouffer, has been absolutely amazing in welcoming us and ensuring that we have what we need. Um, now, the Janet Castle program in Peterborough, it's moving along nicely. It's starting to take shape. The administration team has started to begin to dream about their spaces, where they will live, and how they will live together in this new location. Uh, part of the uh, phase one is complete, where homeward bound families were allowed to move into their, or could move into the suites that they have been built for them. And they will be a part of our uh, childcare program once we open. Uh, I have included uh, some 3D drawings that were, were provided to me of these spaces. Uh, they're in the child care program up at the top that you will see there'll be 10 infants, 15 toddlers and 24 preschoolers in this location too. Our hope that the Janet Castle uh, Early Learning Program will open in September of 2020. We've started our hiring process uh, and we will be excited to build that team to do great things, I'm sure, for the city and, and county of Peterborough. Uh, the next, this is our administration offices. And then this is, uh, this a slide also encompasses the professional development room, as well as the materials initiative. Uh, a special thanks goes out to the Homeward Bound and Peterborough Housing teams for their ongoing collaboration, support, and planning during this build. I continue to meet with them every other week, uh, even virtually uh, right now, to uh, just ensure that we are moving forward and we're thinking together about what the needs are for that program. 
our administration team uh, started to think about how they could support families and staff when we had to have sensitive conversations. We decided to uh, conduct a book study around having hard conversations by Jennifer Abrams. We had rich conversations around our table, uh, around the high image we hold of families, the importance of strong, trusting relationships. Together we learned it's important to be kind, honest and understanding to support families to, and support families to be successful. The Ministry of Education, uh, Early, early years, licensing visits for 2019 were very successful. We noticed that there's a shift in licensing visits. We've begun to, the, the shift has begun to allow us to have opportunities to share the wonderful work that is happening in our programs, the documentation that's on the walls, to share lunches, to share uh, moments of uh, singing with the children and the uh, program advisor. They often are leaving wonderful comments at the bottom of our summaries uh, around engagement, um, how does learning happen, and they leave us with a reflective question. When the possibilities are presented to us, if there is possibilities or challenges presented to us, the teams often look at these possibilities as opportunities. They see them as gifts to grow this program stronger and to be successful. And anytime that they do have lessons that they've learned, they share them with others to hold them high and help others be successful. I can't wait to see what adventures um, the 2020 uh, year is going to bring us and we will, we, Thank you all for all that you do. You are all truly, simply amazing human beings. And I can't do this work without all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Any questions or reflections for Jill? That was the first time I have seen um, any drawings of the Minden program and I have seen the Janet Castle ones, but not the Minden ones. So it was great. Thank you, Jill, for showing those. They look amazing. So exciting for Minden and community. It is very exciting. Thanks, Jill. Jenny, I believe you're up. Hi, my name is Jenny Cullen and I'm the Human Resources Link here at Compass ELC. Um, it's a role that brings me great joy. Um, I am uh, this evening speaking on behalf of a dynamic human resources team. Um, as the organization grew in 2019, so did our HR team. So living into distributed leadership, our HR team of Amy Starmans, Ryan Heath, Val McGee and myself met consistently and collaborated over the year. We, we reflected on our roles and merging our strengths and passions, um, it helped streamline our HR practices. It is always with intentionality aligning our work with Compass, Early Learning and Care Strategic Plan and Organizational Values. Uh, Val took on the role as um, Supply Coordinator. Uh, she's amazing at creating systems and processes so that the supply have a connection and that they are a team. Um, su supply staff are a vital um, role to our organization. Um, so this has been successful in creating a sense of belonging and for licensing and, and file updates as well. So thanks Val. Um, Amy is our payroll guru, <laughs> ADP guru, um, and she's also taken on the role of looking after the benefits, so there's one person to go to. Um, the support that she offers staff is amazing and always so innovative. Um, she always, her responses are always thoughtful and she keeps us thinking deeper. So thank you, Amy. Ryan is looking after our recruitment and hiring. He's that person. Um, he's right from the requisition to the posting, um, shortlisting. He's uh, intentional with and collaborative with questions. Um, that we send them beforehand to our staff or to our um, recruits so that uh, they know what questions they're getting. They're um, reflective questions and it's about their story. And this has been successful in the past. Uh, he schedules the interviews, uh, he, he notifies the staff, he creates the employee letters. So it's been a really great uh, process and really streamlined that way. Uh, it's really working well. Um, it's given me the opportunity to be in programs and 
supporting distributed leadership um, in the notion that we're all leaders in this organization and we bring strengths to this team. Uh, Sheila and I um, have been fortunate enough to um, attend many staff meetings, um, really planting the seed with distributed leadership and, and have, um, you know, people really reflect on what they bring to a team and their strengths and um, who they are as a leader. Um, I've also been doing some book studies, some coaching conversations, and um, been inspired by Cy Wakeman and Brene Brown, whose names have been mentioned before, um, and, and doing some research on our organizational culture. Um, so when talking to the team, some of the work that we are most proud of in 2019, um, Hannah, and, Hannah and Ryan worked on a um, communication tool um, and introduced us to it. Um, Trello. Um, so it's been able to keep us all doing our, our separate lanes, but keep us all connected as an HR team. And it's been very, very helpful. Um, the orientation process as well, we reflected on that. Um, and uh, we, we have a component, a welcome to Compass component. And so it's a full day now. Um, we wanted to welcome new employees and be able to get to know them a bit more and what um, unique leadership strengths they will bring to the organization. Um, we also wanted to give them a bit more of a foundation of what we do at Compass and our why. And um, the laughter and the joy <laughs> that um, exudes from that boardroom when orientation is happening with Val and Ryan is just amazing. And so we know that that's a that's, that's, tells the story of success for that, for sure. Um, so here are some details about our onboarding in 2019. So these were new hires in 2019. So you can see uh, with the addition of Coburg coming on, our permanent staff, uh, contract staff, supply educators really increased um, with Val coordinating that. Um, and then uh, we had 21 uh, summer students last year. This gives the percentage of our supply to permanent to contract. Um, with the Canada Summer Jobs, who we've applied um, for the last, well, since I've been in this role for 10 years um, and have applied for 2020 as well. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing because we have um, 16 out of the 21 that are actually still working with us. Um, this is active staff, and I just wanna preface this slide with um, this is a snippet in time. Um, <laughs> like a timestamp. Um, so our um, uh, employees, uh, it, it's always kind of fluctuating whether it be, I, I think September we talked about there was just over 400 on payroll including um, employees and providers. Um, so this is a snippet in time um, and by position um, we have 108 RECEs at this time, 171 um, educators, um, 67 administrative staff, 11 nutrition specialists, and one cleaner. Um, we do have some contract uh, cleaners with the organization as well. Um, and then charts to show the um, how it looks in, in a graph that way. And then our turnover rate is 8.4%, which is pretty amazing. The uh, turnover rate, um, actually provides a number, but you can also go in depth with, um, you know, were they uh, long-term staff, were they short-term staff? And so uh, I don't really have a lot of details about that there, but I can compare it with um, the, the average turnover rate for 2019 for Canada was 21%. So it is quite low. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to end too. I didn't expect this uh, AGM to make me so misty-eyed. <laughs> So I just want to thank everyone and together is better. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or reflect? I, I am like, I'm really having a hard time because I'm loving all of this and I can't, I'm just reading the chat and it's so amazing. All of the, the beautiful notes and mm -hmm. it's just so heartwarming. Okay, so um, I'm going to share a little bit about two different roles that I take on in the organization. I want to talk a little bit about the external role, but um, um, I have to say there's no possibility 
of being able to go out and share um, from a consulting standpoint without having the amazing work that happens internally in our organization. Uh, I, it's such a gift, such a privilege to be able to travel around North America and around the world to be able to share stories of the work that happens at Compass. And I just have to tell you that each and every educator um, that, um, that, that shares photos and stories and experiences, that I can't even tell you the amount of people that you have touched with your work and i'm just so grateful that i get to be the caveat to do that in so many ways um provincially um you can see so many places we've been within ontario and then provincially and this year i've had the great privilege of being able to travel a little bit more internationally i don't know what 2020 will bring uh with travel but i can tell you i'm i'm equally grateful to be home right now with all of you um some of the work is the work is different in different places i've been fortunate to offer institutes and uh, consulting and keynotes and reflective series i also have to say that i'm incredibly grateful to be able to bring along with me on many of these occasions um different people in the organization that can stand side by side with me as we share our stories and experiences um i have to i have to give a a huge shout out to Hannah, and I know other people have as well. Um, but this past two years, or Hannah, how long have you been with us? It feels like a year and a half. Okay, it feels like forever um, that you've always been part of our team. But without Hannah's support and coordination, and I think the pedagogical team would equally say this, is that Hannah helps us to stay connected and grounds us in our thinking and find so many innovative ways for us to stay communicating with one another so i thank you hannah and hannah has taken over the coordination and the of the professional internal professional development calendar as well um this past uh in 2019 uh when i was looking back we sure did a lot um within the organization um there were so many um, organizational professional developments that happen, um, but I was I was so touched when I looked at the number of people in the organization that are now facilitating PD. Um, I think about um, you know uh, Kirsty and your work with Risky Play, Angela, all your work with uh, Loose Parts, and you know and. Uh, I know that the human resources team and Jill and Sheila, you've all really started to share more and more around culture and licensing and book studies um, and budgeting, uh, mindfulness. I, I think when you look at what we do, the variety of opportunities that are offered to our organization are quite stunning and the uh, capacity of the people that work within it are amazing as well. Uh, the other thing I will mention is that one of the things that we really started to pay attention to last year was to provide more opportunities um, regionally uh, for, for programs so that there was less travel. So a huge shout out to the pedagogical team. I, I, I can't even tell you um, what it feels like to work with so many amazing thinkers all the time. and. Um, the the um just the 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 willingness and the joyfulness of being able to bring your communities together always um has been amazing we've had such a big focus on the outdoors um and such a uh, a big focus on um our experiences with uh, materials and angela uh her stunning work with the atelier um, has brought people from across our province, but brought everyone from our across our organization to be able to be part of that amazing work as well. So I, I, I can't thank you all enough. It's been so great. We've um, the pedagogical team has been meeting on a on a regular basis. We we sometimes meet regionally and sometimes meet organizationally, but the commitment um, to professional development has been not just from an organizational standpoint, from a center to center um, basis. So thank you to everyone. Uh, we've also had a great opportunity to be able to 
reach out and, and offer um, opportunities for our organization to go to other um, programs. I have to say Work Human has had a, a big impact on our organization. Last year, a large contingent went to the London Bridge Research Study Tour, um, the Ontario Regio Association Conference, uh, Timber Nook also participated in a conference, and I this I have to just I want to say a big thank you to the School Age team that um, brought together the School Age Institute at the end of last year, and we brought people from across our province to our organization. And Angela also opened up the atelier, and Maya Chakabi, and I think a few people have mentioned um, her work with us has been uh, transformative um, to say the least. Um, so just a big thank you to everyone who has been part of learning and growing together. I, I travel everywhere and I have to tell you, there's no place like Compass. There's no place that has the kind of commitment and the kind of culture and the kind of humanity. Um, and uh, I am so grateful to work for an organization that has, is, is inspiring to so many people across the world. So a huge thank you to everyone. There we are. Any questions or reflections? Thank you, Lori. Wow. So Kathy, now you get to make the motion. Okay, and my apologies. I hadn't realized that there were all the other separate individual reports. And I just, as you continued each, if as each of you continued um, to go through your reports, I just became more and more awestruck about the organization. And I, I thought I knew it all, or knew it was not. I know I never know it all, but I thought I was aware of many of the things, um, the inspiring things that are taking place. But thank you for providing these reports because it just um, makes me even um, more mindful and aware of what is actually in the business and the hard work and the heart work, as many of you have said, that is happening to Compass. So thank you. So now a motion, our, our board um of directors if i could have someone to make the motion to approve the 2019 annual report you will need to okay cheryl and second by doug did i see you doug absolutely, absolutely. i'll second that and all those in favor just use your little chat button again please board members I think we have it. Excellent. Thank you. That motion is carried and the approval of our 2019 annual report. Okay, so now we're going to move along to the nomination. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, in 2019, we had quite a turnover of um, our transition of our board of directors and we welcomed um, Amanda McEachern Godet and Cheryl Herter and then also more recently uh, Megan um, Gren. So if I could please ask um, Sarah, Doug, or John, I'm not sure whether John is with us. So Sarah or Doug, if you would like to move the nomination, actually, Sheila or Doug, maybe you could help me out with this. Do we need to nominate as a full? We don't need to nominate them. What we need, what we do is uh, we need to make a motion to ex to accept those that were previously appointed as full board members now. So I, I'll make that motion. Okay. And I have someone to second. So it looks like Sarah or John, if you're with us. Okay. 
Sarah, are you there? Okay. I'm not sure if they, Doug, I'm not sure if one of them can second that motion. I'm doubtful of that. No, they can't, they can't uh, <laughs> make a motion for themselves, unfortunately, although I wouldn't be, have a problem with it, but the rules say we can't. Uh, no. So we'll have to table this one to our next board meeting. Okay. Okay, unless Sarah. If Sarah's there. Sarah's there. Sarah, you would need to unmute yourself if you are there. Perhaps she had to leave the room at the moment. So, okay. Uh, okay, that's what we'll, we'll Sarah do. Sarah is here. Pardon? Sarah is still, yes. she's still the participant. I, I see her name there and her mic is muted, but it, be that she's having technical difficulties, but she's not answering. Oh, right, okay. okay. Um, so yes, we'll, we'll have to leave that for the actual um, nomination and election of the full board or those additional um, members at our next board meeting. So Kathy, before you adjourn, could I just have one second? Yes. Are you are you ready to adjourn or no? Yes, that's the last item on our agenda. Okay. So um, uh, I just I want to also give a big shout out to um, uh, as links in the organization. We're we're so fortunate to have so many people to work with, but I also. I wanted to make sure that um, the coordinators of the organization were also mentioned and thanked. Um, and that would be um, uh, the coordinators of Val, um, uh, Angela, uh, Hannah, uh, and Jenna, and Amy, who uh, without their coordination in so many ways, uh, I, I'm not sure how we would uh, be able to manage all the things that we do. So a big thank you to them. I also wanted to say that um, Val has uh, has created an amazing video. Uh, unfortunately, we've had some technical difficulties tonight and we won't be able to share that video, but um, uh, we will be sharing it through social media. Uh, sorry, and uh, thank you. And Tammy, thank you, Ashley. Uh, for that, and um, I'm sure we're missing people, but um, I just, I, I don't know, there's no way we could do this without the amazing people that work in this organization. Uh, there isn't another place like it. Um, but we will share that uh, video um, on social media. We have been uh, dancing um, uh, throughout this pandemic, and we will continue to dance, and Val captured some amazing things. So we will share that. So please follow us on social media, and you'll be able to say that see that thank you I just wanted to say that I've been trying to go back and forth so if you see me <laughs> looks like I'm ignoring you or something I have an iPad behind me I have a computer here but you just can't get it up so but wait for it because it's pretty flipping funny <laughs> looking Great. forward to that Val uh, Kathy Sarah is back now if we Wonderful. wanted to Great. I did see that. I actually, while Val is there and with us, I just also want to um, do a little, an extra little shout out to Val and Rachel. I'm not sure if Rachel is on tonight, but Rachel and Val, Rachel in the past has supported the board um, with taking minutes and getting the agendas out and getting our reports together. And thank you um, for doing that. And, and thank you for Val now for carrying on those tasks. We very grateful. Uh, for your ability to do that. Thank you. Okay, so going back, sorry, we had a little um, mm -hmm. um, technical difficulty here, but um, so Sarah, you're on now. Could you just unmute yourself, Sarah? I'm here, sorry, I had to put one of the kids to bed. <laughs> they, were, they were very no upset. So we have one more um, motion. It's the nomination of our um, new board members. So it would be the nomination of um, Amanda um, McCarthy-Gaudet, Cheryl Herder, 
uh, Megan um, Curran for a two-year term, and then Kathy Warner, Doug Lytle, Sarah Stokes, um, and John Gillian for a second. But the nomination for Amanda, Cheryl, and Megan, because um, Doug has put forward, moved, already put forward that motion, but we need someone else to second it. And so none I of will those. I will second the motion. You can second it, that'd be great. And um, all those in favor? And I guess I'm not sure how we do that, but. So it, in this instance, because there aren't enough other people here, Kathy, you can throw a vote on this one too, I think. Okay. Woohoo! <laughs> for me. <laughs> okay, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, I will, um, and so that motion has been moved. And again, thank you to those board members for coming on board and for our um, longer serving board members, Sarah and Doug and John, for continuing to be with us. And I guess that so wraps up um, our meeting. We do need an motion to adjourn, but before I do, thank you everyone for being with us um, and being part of this evening. And I'm just so amazed that so many of you um, came and, and were part of this. Thank you so much. And so officially, if I could ask one of the board members to um, adjourn tonight's the night, 2019 annual general meeting. I will make the motion to adjourn. I will second. And a second. All those in favor. Aye. Okay. All right. All right. Carrie, thank you. Thanks everybody for coming. That was wonderful. We were 124 strong. Wow. Great. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Have a, good, have a good evening. Take care and be safe, everyone, and remain healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye now.